When I think of what Jesus really did for me, I'm very thankful that he did that, but like I feel unworthy that he did all that, but yet he does it for each each one who comes to him. Stay good day. Welcome my friends to the storyteller where you'll find First Nations people from across native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. On today's program, we'll hear from a young woman who put her trust in Jesus as a teenager, but soon found herself wandering away. Perhaps you or someone you know is in that same place. If so, you won't want to miss today's program. My name is Sherry Cardinal. I come from Kikino Métis Settlement here. It's in Alberta. I grew up here in Kikino with my parents and two brothers and three sisters. Growing up, we had to do chores. We had to haul water. We had to scrub the floors, do the dishes, and um, it's all of that stuff that helped me later on in life. My parents used to take us to church a lot when we were little, and we used to go to camps in the summertime, and that was so much fun, singing the different songs and listening to the different stories. And um, when I was 17, it was the last camp at Kiwaitin that they had the camps over there, and it was my last year that I can go to a camp it was during one of the messages that he was giving, and it was then that I knew that I needed, like I needed the Lord in my life to cleanse me from my sins. Because he said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And while he was speaking, I felt a heaviness over me that I needed to get things right with the Lord. And... It was then that I, after the meeting, I put up my hand and I talked with him. And it was then that he showed me through the Bible and that I needed to get my life right and accept the Lord. During some of that time at camp, I learned that Jesus did die on the cross for my sins and that he was, he didn't sin. And here he put all our sin on like he died for it and to me that's you know a lot of stuff that i did in my life like he he died for my sins and then he made it a way for me to be free from that and it's not accounted for it's that a verse in psalms 103:12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That verse means that he doesn't see our sin anymore and that it's just like a slate that's wiped clean. It was then that I accepted the Lord. And after that, it just felt like not a weight, but just something was lifted then. I went to Bible school the following year, and it, it was neat learning God's Word and just growing there. But during that time, I made a, some bad choices, and I didn't go to Bible school the following year, just by some of my choices. And then... It was then that I started drinking and backsliding and then became pregnant with my first daughter. And I tried to fit in um, with the crowd and going out and doing um, drugs. And I still felt empty. And then I got pregnant again, two different fathers for my children. And you think you learn the first time, but 
I don't know, you just keep going in into your sin, like keep doing things that you're not supposed to. And I used to leave my girls with different babysitters and for the weekend. And then when I'd come back on a Sunday or something, I'd try buy them gifts just because I was away from them. And um, this is the in their early part of their lives. And my brother, Eric, in 96, got into a car crash. And it was then that, even during this time, there was an emptiness that I've found, like going out and coming, like doing all the stuff I used to do, that it wasn't filling the inside for me. And during all of the going through with losing a brother so sudden, um, a verse came into my mind and it's in Hebrews 9.27 where it says it's appointed for a man once to die and then after that judgment. And that really scared me because of the way I was living and if my life was taken suddenly like how my brother's was like where would I go would I go to heaven or would I go to hell and it was after everything was over the funeral and all that that I went into my um, where I stayed in Laclavish while I was going to school little housing unit and I just got on my knees and I asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins and that I didn't want to live the way I lived and to help me with my children. And it was then that I just knew that I, the way I was living was wrong and that I needed to bring my girls up to teach them about the Lord and to take them to Sunday school so they can also learn about the Lord and just change my lifestyle. On March 31st of 96, that's when I I came back to the Lord. And then from there, I started going to church and um, reading my Bible and praying. But one of the comments, my oldest girl at the time, she was four, she told me, Mommy, I, I'm glad you don't drink beer. And I used to think that my children didn't notice the times that I would do all that stuff but they do know and they do see like what you do I moved out here back to Kikido in November of 96 and been just coming to church and just growing and raising my children when I think of what Jesus really did for me, I'm very thankful that he did that, but like I feel unworthy that he did all that, but yet he does it for each each one who comes to him. It says in his word that in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's one of my favorite verses. And it's true for me, too, that once I accepted the Lord, that I have that everlasting life. I'm so thankful that I have Christian parents. Because when I moved back to Kikido, they were there for me um, as part of my support because I'm a single mother of two girls. And so many times I told my dad, I sure wish I would have listened to you way back then. <laughs> but it's just neat how like your parents are there for you and help you through some of the tough times with parenting. I'm thankful that 
that when I rededicated my life that I wanted to be be serious about it and that the Lord would, you know, through the different trials that I did go through before this and like even after this, that the Lord has helped me through all that and facing different situations like dealing with death that of a mom and of a brother. If I didn't have the Lord in my heart, it would be very hard to deal with some of that and how he's helped me through, like answering my prayers and having different ones being there, encouraging me and through getting to know him too, through his word. My mom and I didn't have um, the greatest relationship, but um, through the power of forgiveness, it was so neat to see how the Lord works things out. We both had peace when my mom passed on and there was no like regrets, but like how the Lord worked it out in his time of to make things right between us. And I'm just so thankful for the parents that he did give me. And I look forward to seeing her in heaven again someday. Each of us are sinners and we need to be, if we have that heavy conviction, like if he's speaking to us, not to let that go. And this is why I chose to give or to accept the Lord into my heart because I needed my sins to be forgiven for the things that I did against my parents and a whole lot of other people. And now that I did, he no longer uses or sees that sin in my life at that time. And each of us have to do this because we have to stand before him for judgment and give an account for our life. It's a miserable thing for a child of God to wander away from him. But Sherry's story reminds us that there is a way back. God tells us in the Bible in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Did you get that? God will forgive and cleanse us if we will come to Him honestly with our wrongdoing. That's God's promise to those who belong to Him. Do you belong to Him? Have you wandered away? It's time to humble yourself and come back to the Lord. Don't waste another day. And if you haven't yet put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, there's no better time than now. Interested in what you've heard? Write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. That's 877-766-4648. Our web address is withoutreservation.com. And you can also find us on Facebook at Without Reservation. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there are more amazing stories to tell. So be sure to join us again next time as we listen to... The Storyteller.